Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. We are going back to that horrible world known as the JRC, but before we do, the usual disclaimers. If you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shocks campaign or the campaign against the troubled teen industry, excuse me, you're going to find all the pertinent links right there in the description box. Please, in particular, take note of the article written by Neuroclastic, a small non for profit started by Autistics for Autistics, in that they interviewed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to Judge Rotenbitter. Center's so-called behavioral, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, folks, their behavioral intervention program. Matter of fact, the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read this article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. They did not remove it from the website. Well, folks, Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill. Read the article. Share it on all your social media. Also included in there is Neuroclastic's public statement regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the Judge Rotenberg Center ever actually sees through with their threat. Folks, trigger warning one. When we talk places like the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center or Agape Boarding School for Boys, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with mental health issues and disabled people being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please go ahead and utilize the headphones. Number two, this channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and they're watching this, very obviously parental supervision is advised, all right? All right, so part B. The FDA's determination that ESDs for SIB or AB present an unreasonable substantial risk of illness or injury. Question. The way this should read, the FDA's determination that the GED device presents an unreasonable and substantial risk of illness or injury should be the title of this here. Why isn't it? Why did we backpedal so much that we ended our ban before it even began. I would love to see what happened between the proposed ban document we've gone over and the final rule here, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall? I'm going to guess while it's opened. The FDA considered all available data and information from a wide variety of sources, including the data information submitted to the docket for the panel meeting, a proposed rule, scientific literature, information and opinions from experts, information from state agencies that also regulate ESDs, as well as their actions on ESDs, information about effective manufacturer residential facility, information from individuals subject to ESDs and their family members, and information from disability rights groups, other government entities, and other stakeholders. There's a lot of problem here because this is the sort of crap that the JRC used to say, it's just people who find it uncomfortable. If it were me on the FDA, I'd be like, Individual other service providers, such as the Ark of the United States, Easter Seals of America, the March for Dimes organization, NAMI, you know, because these names hold a great more deal of weight with the public, even if they don't know what's going on, instead of using 
professionals, people who are manufacturers or residential, people who use other skin shock devices. I don't know why. Let's start with other people who use DSDs and their family members. Because you're talking about the SIBIS machine being used by individuals who requested them themselves, who have full control over when they are going to be shocked with that device. A luxury that the kids at the Judge Rotberg Educational Center do not have. Okay? Which means... Anything they might have to say in regards to risks or benefits is null and void because these are not identical situations. In fact, I can tell you, as an entity who worked inside the service system as well as having navigated it as a consumer, that when it comes to ESDs, it is used specifically in the cases where individuals have requested them of their doctors. They had to get special, special, God, I can't think of the word right now. They had to get special permission in order to be able to do so. Sign a paper which absolved their doctors of any responsibility should that end in horrific injury, I might add. And then they are issued and prescribed said device over which they have complete control. So whether or not those using the SIBIS in such a manner, and whether there has been greater benefits than risks, hinges very much on the individuals using said devices. With the GEDs, it is different because you are hooked up to a device that is being controlled by another person against your will, which means they can shock you over anything at any time. They can choose the frequency. They can choose how much electricity you're being pumped with. They can choose your level of pain, okay? These things are not similar, okay? Just wanted to clear that up. By throwing in other disability rights groups and government entities, it glosses over the major service providers who came out and spoke during these hearings against the GED. And in fact, provided the bulk of of medical information in regards to the advances that have occurred in the over the last 40 years of medicine when it comes to dealing with people with developmental disabilities. You wanna know where the massive amount of data came from? from the ARC, from Easter Sales, from these organizations that work hand in hand with doctors who are not being paid by ARC or by Easter Seals. So where does data all came from? Scientific data is not just something that is easily gathered quickly, okay? Not even remotely close, especially not in a situation like this. You want to see the government at its most slow and ineffective? Look up anything that has to do with disability rights sometime or disability medicine. Okay? That's why when you are fighting these types of fights, you have to have the patience of a saint. Because nothing gets done instantly. Or even within a few months or even a few years. That's why it's called the long fight. And why I keep telling you all, I'll sleep when I'm dead. The difference in wording here. Adding things like the Ark and Easter Seals in place of what they put here adds weight. It adds authority. Whereas 
a description like this could have the JRC tearing into it saying, well, they're being pressured by the autistic neurodivergent rights people who really don't understand what's good for them because, folks, at the end of the day, it's an ableist world we all live in. Our word holds no weight. None is easily dismissed of the words of those who don't understand what's good for them. Sorry to burst your bubble. It's not that I'm devoid of hope. I am a nihilist in the way of seeing things as they are, not as I want them to be. And what are the realistic steps that have to be taken in order to get where we need to be. It's kind of a strange way to be, I know, but it's been working this long and I'm almost 40, so there you go. The fact of the matter is using those names carry far more greater of a weight especially when you're dealing with politicians, then using such terms as disability rights groups and government entities and advocacy groups and stakeholders. It just does. Politicians, regardless of what they say during election years, don't give a shit of a, about us as individuals. What they do care about is large organizations like ARC, like NAMI, like Easter Seals, that should they be so moved could completely destroy their entire career. Naming these entities matters when you're trying to do something on the magnitude that we're trying to do here. Again, this is not me saying that we as our individual selves shouldn't be taken seriously. It's me living in the reality of knowing that we are not and what things need to be put in there in order to get where we need to be. It's not right. It's not fair. It's ableism of the highest order. But this is the world we live in. Okay. Let's finish up, shall we? One moment. In weighing each piece of data and information, the FDA took into account its qualities, such as the level of scientific rigor supporting it the objectivity of its source. See, this is what shot the JRC in the foot here because them providing studies that they conducted means the objectivity can be thrown out the window and it's not even worth the paper that it's typed out on. It's recency and any limitations that might weaken its value. Thus, for example, we gave much more weight to the results of a study reported in a peer-reviewed journal, thank you, by an objective author than we did to anecdotal evidence, JRC. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and close out, but I want you to keep in mind one of the other things they just did to shoot themselves in the foot is they did not use the weight of authority that naming these other large organizations would have put behind supporting the decision of the ban. Naming ARC or Easter Seals or NAMI, or for the love of God, the international groups that back this ban, and instead using it in these vague terms, again, the FDA shot themselves in the foot. 
we're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, folks, we here at Smilling Tea hope you have a good one. I'll see you in a few seconds.